Well, this is interesting, but not in a good way. Uh, you may recall in a recent video I opened up this tester. You know what? As far as these testers go, it was actually pretty good. It did the uh, RCD or GFI test. It detected a potential difference between the mains earth and the ambient earth, and it did the electrical tests on whether the live was in the correct polarity and stuff like that. And there's these other simpler ones that don't have that uh, test button, but there's also this one which does have the test button. I thought, well, you know what, I'll, I'll open them up and I'll take a look inside because it's going to be pretty similar. Now, there are more sophisticated ones. Take, for instance, this Fluke one that was sent to me by a chap called Oliver who works in facilities management. And he said this one, one day it just everything was just it said it's got an earth fault. And it turns out that there's one resistor has failed in here that's causing that. But of more interest here is the fact that this is just basically the same circuit. It's got these big power resistors in the back. Quite nice that it's got the big power resistors. But it's also got a sounder, and the only difference between this and uh, the other type units is that this one, if it detects a, a wrong state, it'll make a sort of peeping, pulsing, peeping noise. And it's got a PIC12 microcontroller. Which tw uh, PIC12 is that? Let me just double check that. PIC12 C. 508A. That's quite an old processor, actually. Can you see that? And um, so this one, uh, the, I'm a bit suspicious about these resistors. I'm wondering why that failed. It could have failed because there's a little hint of corrosion at one side, or it could have failed because some debris got into this and shorted something out. Uh, but there's not really an awful lot to fill. But most of the circuitry in here is to... Um, power this microcontroller and give it the signals. It, you know, it's just, it's a huge excess for something you could actually just look at the LEDs and say, two green lit, that's good, red lit, that's bad sort of thing. That seems a wee bit overkill, but that's how this industry seems to work. I shall try and reverse engineer this later on. Uh, of more interest was when I opened this one, which I thought was going to be super simple, and I saw all these transistors and components. It seems really complicated, and I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. What's, what's so special about that? So I reverse engineered it. I printed out just a, I didn't do a glossy photo this time because it was just my own scribbles. I printed out the uh, layout on the, the a photo of the circuit board and then just traced the tracks over. And uh, as I usually do, I also took a photo of the back and then flipped it so I could see how these tracks correlated to it. And it's very, very odd. And I'll show you the schematic I've doodled out because it's a terrible design. It is just absolutely awful. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. You can tell me what you think yourself. So it starts off, I'll cover this bit at the side here, and it starts off, well, let's uh, zoom up in this. It starts off in the traditional sense. It's got the diode, and it's got a resistor. Uh, well, it's got a resistor. Let's put an exclamation mark on the resistor because it turns out it's not a resistor. And an LED. So it's the same arrangement, and likewise, the test circuit has the button. Uh, in this case, it just bridges these uh, metal contacts here. And uh, it uh, connects the 68K resistor in series between live and earth to test the RCD or GFI. And one extra feature, just for absolutely no reason at all, is it's got the bit of a circuitry that makes an LED light while you're pressing the button, which just seems utterly pointless, but they've added it, so that's what it is. But here's the problem. See all these resistors with exclamation marks in them? They're not actually resistors. Instead, they are this active current regulating circuit and it's a very very odd way to do it and it kind of I thought that transistor is going to dissipate so much heat and I put the thermal imaging camera on it and the, the temperature in this room is very low but it very quickly reached 110 degrees celsius above the ambient temperature in the room and for a transistor that's actually quite high but it gets worse it gets a lot worse you see this is a simple current regulator let me just zoom in again enhance Someone once said I should say that every time I zoom in. Just shout, computer, enhance image. So here we, we've got a simple current regulator, and it works like this. There is a resistor, well, in this case, two resistors, two 20K resistors, uh, limiting the current through this scener, so you end up with 15 volts on the base of a standard NPN transistor. And the... Concept of the current regulator is there's another resistor down here in the emitter, and to turn a transistor on, the base 
In the case of the NPN, the base has to be roughly 0.6 volts above the emitter to actually turn on. And as the current increases, the voltage across this uh, resistor will increase as well. So once the voltage reaches uh, the 15 volts minus the 0.6 volts required, so say about, let's say about 14 and a half volts, that'd be a nice rough figure, or let's be generous, let's say 14 volts. Once it reaches that, the transistor will start turning off, and that's the point it will just rock on its sort of, it's in its a uh, linear region, the, the point between fully on and fully off it will just turn into basically a resistor, which it certainly does, it gets very hot. So let's do the maths associated with this. Let's zoom back out again. So here's the maths. The current that this will regulate will be approximately um, the, say, let's be accurate, 14.4 volts. Uh, so I equals V over R. So that's going to be the 14.4 volts before this starts turning off uh, divided by the resistance. So 14.4 volts. Oh, let's let's actually do that right. 14.4 volts divided by the value of the resistor, which is 6,800 ohms. And it gives a reasonable enough 2 milliamps. And uh, so let's uh, we've got 2 milliamps flowing through here. Keeping in mind that this is uh, fed by a diode, so it's only going to be half that because it's only uh, doing it on one of half of the main cycle. But then, you look at the other side, and I thought, wouldn't those resistors also pass quite a bit of current? So uh, we've got 240 volts, RMS, minus the 15 volts and the 2 volt, the LED. So that's about, say, 17 volts. Let's say 20. So it's 220 volts. So let's work out what's passing through these resistors here. So 220 volts divided by 40,000 ohms. So we've got about 5 milliamps is passing through the current regulator circuit. So that's more than is actually passing through the transistor, which means that theoretically, if you just chop the transistor out, it would work just as well. So the power dissipation. Let's work out the power dissipation for those resistors, uh, which would be 5 milliamps times 0 0.005 times the 240, but keep in mind it's only lit for half, uh, on for half the time, actually that's wrong, it's 220. So uh, that's 0 0.005 times 220 volts across that equals about 1 watt. And it's only on for half the time, so divided by 2 uh, is 0.5 watt, and there's two of them, so divide by 2 again, and it's about quarter of a watt per resistor. So it's, it's not unreasonable. They're small resistors, but they're probably going to handle that as these little surface mount things do. They'll probably get pretty hot. I couldn't see how hot they were getting because the transistor was swamping them. So the transistor is dropping the full whack then. Uh, actually, we've got about the 15 volts across that. So let's say 220 again. Uh, 220. Uh, so the power dissipation of that will be 220 times, and it was about 2 milliamps. So the power dissipation is the best part of a half a watt uh, in this resistor, but divide by two, so it's going to be about a quarter of a watt because it's only on for half the cycle. That, uh, it seemed to be getting very hot for that. Um, but, you know, again, these transistors are not rated to dissipate quarter of a watt, I don't think. Not in that size of package. So that does make me wonder then, what on earth was going through their mind when they designed that? Because they could have just used a resistor. It made me wonder, is it because it's universal voltage? And the same units are available in 110 volt or 240 uh, volt. So that could make sense, except for the 110 volt one, they have to change the value of all these little resistors here because these are all in series. These make up that uh, trip resistor. Instead of using one 68K resistor like the other one did, it uses 10 6.8K resistors all in series to spread the dissipation. It's got a fuse, that's probably quite good because if that transistor gets too hot uh, and as transistors often do and it goes short circuit then there'll be a direct path through the zener, the transistor and it'll, it'll go bang basically. I didn't test that, I didn't leave it on running too long because I thought it was going to blow out the power to the bench if I did that. So um, oh, let's tell you what, let's uh, cut these transistors off and just see what happens. So let's just lop them out and see if it's still lights and does the correct indication. 
So I'm just going to plug this in like this. And there you go. Working just as well without those transistors as if, you know, it would have otherwise. Now I could theoretically get the thermal imaging camera and see what uh, temperature those other things get to. So I'm just going to power that up. Uh, and while the thermal imaging camera is booting up, uh, I shall leave that cooking at the side at the moment and remember not to stick my fingers in it. Uh, while that's happening, let's take a look at this one then. Now, I've already had a wee go. I've, I've used a, another Meg's Electric stuff technique of heating this label to actually peel it off. If you need to get a label off, heating it really helps. It peels off easily. So it hasn't damaged it, but it's still not open. I'm not sure how this is secured shut. I think I may have to use unreasonable spudgery force. So let's uh, get the spudger into it. And if I don't have any luck with this... Oh, that... Well, there you go. What do we have in here? Lots and lots of resistors. That's quite intriguing. Lots of resistors and presumably the diodes as well, but I only see... I only see resistors. I see a diode. Oh, I see two diodes, three diodes. There's the three diodes. Uh, and what's that resistor for? That, that is a lot of resistors. What the earth is all that about? Uh, let's uh, go a wee bit further into this. The thermal imaging camera has now booted up. Let's uh, bring this in and take a look at those little resistors and see how hot they're getting. Oh, they're pretty hot. They also are reaching about 110 degrees Celsius, but they're resistors this time. It's not as scary as when the transistor was getting hot. So, um, right. So I really don't know why they've done that. Uh, you're... Your thoughts on that? What do you think? Why have they designed it that way? Are they just trying to be too clever? Did they did they get overwhelmed by science and want to do sophisticated things? You know, it doesn't need this. This LED here just shows you when you press the button. See, you press the button, and if the breaker is supposed to trip instantly, you press it anyway. But why? Because then the... I don't know, maybe it's just to show your button has been pressed and the breaker hasn't tripped that it lights up. It just seems like a frivolous gimmick. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. Let's get this open. This has actually got more in it now than I was expecting, but it does look like large series strings of resistors designed to spread the dissipation. Let's get this out of the way because this is going to swamp things out. Another thing about this one is the green LEDs are a strange colour. It almost looks like a white LED underneath a green cover. It's a strange washed out greenish colour quite intriguing. Is there going to be anything on the bottom of this? I have a sneaky feeling there isn't going to be anything on the bottom of this. I could be wrong. I'm not wrong. There's nothing. It's a bit messy right enough. It's all got big splodgy solder bits where it's all been hand soldered with particularly obnoxious flux. Okay. So what are these big resistors then? What is that about? Why are they using those big resistors? and then following them up with uh, lots and lots of the smaller resistors. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to pause momentarily and uh, just trace this out. Okay, the Handyman Tech 989, TEK 989, is by far the best of them so far in terms of not stressing out components in the layout. It's a really nice layout in the circuit board. What threw me there? What stopped me just going, oh yeah, that'll be the same as before, was these resistors here. And I still haven't a clue what these are for. I think they may be explosion containment resistors. I'm not really sure. So uh, this is a picture of the circuit board, uh, zoomed up. Here's the real thing, just so you can actually see the components. And notable features here are that these LEDs, the green ones, are indeed gallium nitride white LEDs in a green package. And when you run them uh, about 10 milliamps, the 4 volts is about 3 volts, and they're excruciatingly bright, and they look really sort of yellow when they're lit. Now, that is a bit of an oddity, because uh, normally I'm, I'd be quite happy putting an LED in series of the diode and some resistors if it was one of the older gallium phosphide or gallium arsenide red ones. But um, I've always thought gallium nitride are a bit, you know, more delicate in terms of reverse leakage in a diode, as someone recently mentioned. But in this case, that's what they're doing. Um, 
And fundamentally, it's exactly the same. I'll show you the, uh, well, these resistor arrays here, it's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 15K resistors in series to make up about 105K. And that means that the dissipation is spread really well over those resistors. And on the schematic itself, uh, the LEDs are being run with those resistors in series, half wave, two milliamps uh, if it was uh, just continuous DC current, but because it's a half wave AC, they're running about one milliamp, which is absolutely fine. And the dissipation of these resistors, because it's seven 15K resistors, and that fairly low current in the first place is spread across them, the temperature rise in this when it's running, if you leave it just plugged in continually, uh, these only get to about 10 or 15 degrees Celsius above ambient. So you could just leave that in 24-7 if you want that particular type of plug because uh, it's not being stressed. These are the 100 ohm resistors that I just... One is in series the earth and one is in series the neutral. And all I can think is that if something was to go bang inside the plug for some reason, there's nothing really to do that. Then, then you know, they'd limit the current. You only need them in two of the three legs to limit current, I suppose. That's the only logical reason I can get for that. It's notable that they've used black for earth, red for live, and yellow for neutral, which is rather odd colouring. I think that's just fundamentally what colours of wires they had. But it is, apart from the placement of the components in a slightly different order, it is basically resistor, LED, and a diode, all in series, and just one pair of those connected between live, neutral, uh, live earth, and neutral earth. With the neutral earth being the red one, the hazard one, because uh, that's a one that should never normally light up. There shouldn't be any potential difference between that. The most common fault to cause that LED to light would be reversal of live and neutral, which is a fairly common thing that happens in the, the sockets when people are fumbling about in the dark trying to push, push wires into them, or, or they get complacent, they just get too uh, shoddy about the work. But that's it. Uh, this is actually quite a nice little test plug. It's a shame it doesn't have the test button for the uh, RCD tripping, but uh, having said that, for what it does, it, it just it does it really well. It's uh, it's quite a nice design with that spread out, cool running circuitry. So this is by far the winner, and this, oh, Jesus, I don't know what to say about this. Who designed this? Why did they do it that way? That's just odd.